Hey, if we haven't met before, my name is Preston Blackburn. I own a company called Pivot to Play. I hope that even if we haven't met before, that we'll meet sometime soon. But that being said, our goal is to help inspire educators with the brain science and logic of moving for improved learning and behavior. Now, if you're here, you might be one of the people who agrees with me, which is awesome. But then again, you might be somebody who doesn't agree. You may think play is frivolous, superfluous, unimportant, just the gravy. You may even think that it takes up time during the school day, but if you just give me a couple minutes, I want to convince you of otherwise. Now, first of all, study after study has proven that more physical play leads to improved cognition, behavior, self-regulation, and self-control. In addition, more physical play has been shown to bring about less tattling, more eye contact, and less fidgeting. And who doesn't want that? Because that means fewer redirections. That means more moving forward, fewer headaches, and happier classrooms. But the problem is, kids today don't move enough. Why aren't they moving their bodies enough? Well, think about it. Both school time and after school time have become more sedentary in recent years. And when we're sedentary, we become weak. And when we're weak, it makes moving hard. Second, there's a gap in our culture today. That play gap means children don't have the skills to move and then enjoy that movement. They don't have the skills, so they lack confidence in what their bodies can do and how their bodies can move and how they can use their bodies. It means also they don't have a desire to move or to tackle bigger physical challenges. Do you remember when you were a kid, the thrill of riding your bike down the street the first time? Or the exhilaration of climbing to a height you had never achieved before? Or how about the rush of getting to base in a game of tag before someone tagged you? This kind of moving is intrinsic to the human body. What children do today, sedentary activities, is not hardwired into our brains and our bodies. Sedentary activities don't wire the brain to understand how to move the body, to write, or how to keep it still when it's time to attend. The third thing, sedentary behaviors make children weak. It means that everything from sitting at a desk to holding and manipulating a pencil are harder than they should be. But with ample time to move, children gain the skill, the confidence, and desire to move more. And when they repeat that over and over again, they become physically literate. Physical literacy means children know how to use their bodies whether it's to climb a tree, to kick a ball, or to write their names. Physically literate children have the strength to sit comfortably at a desk or in circle time. They are strong enough to hold up their heads, to write, or to read. And they are strong enough to pursue other physical activity. Sadly, children who don't move a lot will not have the confidence or desire to try bigger physical challenges. These are gonna be the children who choose to sit out during recess and PE. And by default, they're getting weaker. And as they do, they're making sitting at a desk more challenging and more uncomfortable. They're making holding a pencil more tiresome and frustrating. And when school is frustrating, what are kids gonna do? They're gonna wiggle, they're gonna get distracted, and they're gonna to fail to attend, making school even harder. But there's a cure. It's not expensive. It's something children innately crave and it is not hard to add into the school day. We can no longer ignore the fact that children need to move their bodies and they need to move them more than what we're giving them opportunity to do. We can't just depend on recess and PE or after school time to lay that neural wiring that they need to improve their cognition and to improve their behavior. We have to be able to add it into the school day. Teachers can do it. It's not terribly hard. We've got the tools and the data that you need to make it happen. So fill the play gap, get kids moving, and bring calm to your classroom. Hopefully, this two minutes has changed your mind, has sparked a little curiosity, and perhaps you are ready to bring that calm to your classroom to help your kids succeed and excel in school. I'm curious as to what you think, so please leave a comment down below. Um, click our link below and check out our curriculum that we have to help kids get moving during the school day. Check out our blog, um, which is also linked below, which will help you argue for more play, to defend play, physical play in the classroom. Um, we can do this and we can change our culture to make school more fun again, to make school um, and kids happier. So. 
It's awesome to see you. Thanks for being here. Check us out.